Yo, what's good, YouTube? This is Jay from TNJ, and welcome back to the White Tails Dynasty. We get our first look at our high school recruits in this episode, and it's a very small look here, but we want to take a look at the state of Florida and look at a guy that a lot of teams are looking at, especially in the southeast. Karen Hill is the number one running back in the state of Florida. He is an amazing talent. Five stars, 5'11", 210. He's got the size. He's got the speed. He runs a 4'3", 440. He is lights out in the open field. Recently, they just played a game where every scout was at, and IMG Academy took it to the opposing team. But we weren't there to see the number one running back, Karen Hill. We were there to see the backup, and Desmine King, a guy that is a little undersized, but can do a lot of the same things that Karen uh, Hill can do. And I think that this guy is a guy that could be a playmaker on the offense. I think that's one thing that we are missing is a guy that could play in the backfield and could line up out wide. Desmine King is only 5'9", 192, not as fast as his teammate, but he can really do some things with the ball in his hands. He is the number one recruit for us right now. We have an uphill battle in recruiting, ranked seventh on his list. But we'll see how the rest of the season will go. Last episode, we said we would be heading to the state of Pennsylvania here, and we will be doing that today as we take on both Penn State and Pittsburgh. And Penn State is filled with playmakers all around the field. They have an excellent running game. And their quarterback is very good as well as a first-year starter. Let's get this game underway as we are on the road here. Two straight games before returning home in a couple of weeks to face Eastern Michigan. But here comes Penn State. A very good running game. Not a big game last week, but still, Michael Smith can get it done. They run an option right away, and this is going to be a big game. And it, and it will be a touchdown run, but a flag is down on the field. Wow, this one's coming all the way back. What a start for Penn State right there just to get it negated. Penn State is top 15 in the country, number 12 right now. Is This is Hill running the option, and he will pick up a gain of seven yards. This was something that they didn't really run too much last week after they defeated Virginia with the last second uh, I wouldn't say Hail Mary, but a last second touchdown throw as here's a run to left side. And there is a stop in the backfield by safety Will Copes as he gets behind the line of scrimmage and comes up with the stop. That will bring it to a third and six now. Screen pass called. Hill finds Johnson. And he will pick up a gain of 11. As Kai Johnson moves the chains, they're officially across the 50 now, running more of this triple option. Here is a handoff to TJH Henderson, who will pick up a gain of seven. They're starting to run the ball a whole lot today. Last week when they faced Virginia, they were passing the ball a whole lot, but this time they're establishing this run. Wisconsin State hasn't been the greatest in stopping the pass, but we've actually been pretty good stopping the run. Hill throws to the sideline on a second and three, and he's got Jesse Davis on the sideline, toe tapping, and it's a first down catch as well. Hill now handing off to Smith this time. He gets around the edge and gets to about the one yard line. But after a penalty, they get all the way back to the nine. This is going to be Jeremy Hill in the backfield is Jermaine Carraway, who has had a nice couple of first games, racking up a couple of sacks as well. Hill throws third and goal, and that somehow gets into the end zone, Dante DeBose. Jeremy Hill leads a long drive, milking off seven minutes off the clock pretty much, as now we come out onto the field. Here is Evan Coleman now. His first pass will be completed to just in time for a gain of 18 who went over 100 yards for the first time in this series for a receiver last week. Here's a quick throw. This is Thomas James and he picks up a gain of seven. 
Those two guys are leading our team in catches and yards. Here's a quick throw to Kwani Jordan, and he can't hold on to that pass. Incomplete. J.J. Applewood checked into the game now for a third and three, and he will take it for a gain of nine yards. A lot of you guys have floated around the idea of possibly even moving J.J. Applewood's position if he doesn't come up with a full-time quarterback job. But here is almost an interception. Taz Womack is there. And that will result in a punt as Penn State comes back out onto the field. Jeremy Hill will see if he can lead another drive. Here's a quick throw across the middle. He's got Davis again, beating Han Chi, and he gets to about the 50-yard line for a gain of 26 yards and a first down. Just about 20 seconds left here in the first quarter. There is a catch and a fumble by Penn State. It's picked up by the defense, but we're going to take a closer look at this one. Jacquez Thompson picks it up, but it looks like that knee probably is down. Penn State remains with possession here to start the second quarter. Jeremy Hill line up here with four wide out there. We send the safety blitz, and it's a sack. It's Pat Bembry coming in from that nickel position. And he comes up with another sack. So here we go. We get possession right back now. Still down by seven here in the second quarter. Here's Coleman trying to buy some time. And he gets out of the pocket. Bryce Kinner gets to him. That's a loss of nine yards. We're all the way back at the five-yard line. Third and 23. Coleman tries to buy some time and throws to the middle of the field. Incomplete. Penn State right back out onto the field. A terrible punt will lead them with great field position as that's one position we probably have to recruit. Here is Smith now with the triple option. He picks up a gain of three. Look at that yardage last year, 2,100 yards, 25 touchdowns. As here is Hill with a quick throw, and he's got Jesse Davis. That's a gain of eight. Another first down for Penn State. Here is Hill now under center. He throws to the end zone. This one's picked off. It's Han Chi for the first interception of the series. Han Chi has been getting beat quite a bit early on in this series in the first couple of games. But now he comes up with his first turnover. Maybe that will light a spark here. Coleman gets out of the pocket. He tries to throw this one away and doesn't even get it out of bounds. And Evan Coleman is down. The trainers will have to come out to see him. J.J. Applewood checked into the game now. Here's a third and three, a quick middle screen, and that's a perfect call to Thomas James, the tight end, who can line up wide. You can just see it on that play. He can line up everywhere. He's lined up on the line this time, second and 10. The uh, Penn State Nittany Lions send the blitz, and that's going to be a catch by Benjamin Duke out of the backfield. They really want to get pressure on Applewoods, but also keep him contained. So you're going to see a lot of pressure on him as he throws this one across his body. The pressure was in on that pass. And now Penn State is right back out onto the field. Michael Smith now starting out the next drive. He's got about three minutes to go here to get some points on the board. As Jeremy Hill is lined up under center this time. Hand off to Johnson. Leaping over Jermaine Car Caraway. And he breaks free. Caraway catches up with him. But he gets to about the 15-yard line. Seven for 55 yards for Johnson. And now they're inside the red zone at about the 15-yard line. Two minutes to go. They're looking to use some clock as well. Not giving us any possessions here at the end of the first half as Jeremy Hill has been on the money today. They get inside the 10 now. Hill pitches out to Smith. Smith breaks a tackle, and he does barely pick up the first down, and Penn State calls the timeout. Goal-to-go -go situation. After a penalty, they lose a couple of yards, and there is Han Chi again making plays today. Third and goal. Hill throws to the corner of the end zone. How does he get that wide open? We were in a cover three on that play. Our defensive coordinator just called a simple cover three, and somehow the receiver gets wide open. I have no idea why we had two receivers on the guy in the flat. So under a minute to go now. J.J. Applewoods is going to go down. 
and that will end the first half. We're not even going to try here because what's the point? Three timeouts, but we're in our own territory, down two scores. So at half, we really want to maybe try to run the ball a little bit. But here comes Noah Binkowski into the game now in the third quarter at quarterback. And that one will be a delay of game. As J.J. Applewoods checks back in, Noah Binkowski is the third string quarterback. Injury update on Evan Coleman. He is out with a concussion. Third and 12, throw into the sideline. And Dequani Jordan had it in his hands. He cannot hold on. Those are the passes that you just got to help ourselves out with. I mean, you got to help your quarterback out. Penn State up by two scores now and possession as they do complete the pass here, getting the first down. Jeremy Hill has been on today, 15 of 16. That only incompletion is an interception. Incredible. Handoff this time to Anderson. He gets up the middle, and that one will be a gain of 13 yards. Penn State is doing what other teams couldn't do in the first two games, really just wearing us down. Mix a pass and throw, and that one is almost picked off, though. Meech Edwards had an interception in his hand. It could have been two incompletions, two interceptions for our defense. But instead, the drive continues. Second and 10, quick throw. It's Browning. You can't give a team like Penn State a second chance. They will kill you every time. At the 41 now, Hill throwing to the sideline and right at Han Chi, and he gives up a 15-yard catch to Jesse Davis for the first down. Now at the 20, this looks like another option pass, or another option run, I should say, and it's Kai Johnson who picks up a gain of eight. Penn State eventually scores on this drive and gets in, and it makes it 21 to nothing. And Wisconsin State is really just like grasping for anything here in the fourth quarter. Here's Justin Time, and he picks up a gain of 19. That's a big time catch. Only his second catch of the game. The defense has been putting pressure on our quarterbacks today, and including a injury to our starter and Evan Coleman. And Applewoods just hasn't gotten been able to get going. Pressure up the middle now. Applewood stops, throws this one deep, and he's got Tay Evans deep down the seam. Touchdown. 56 yards. And Applewoods will find Tay Evans deep. And this is the one thing that I don't know if Evan Coleman can do. Throw a deep ball like this. But Evans just got behind the defense. It was an absolutely perfect throw right there. Still down by two scores, though, into the fourth quarter. Hill running the option, but there is a nice stop, and that is Crawford Joe. We are making stops today, but we just haven't been able to really produce the offense. Third and 14, we try to get some pressure up the middle, and Hill finds Browning for another first down. Every single time we try to stop them, they come up with a third down throw, and that one was absolutely perfect. 22 first downs to only five. Here is a pitch play, but it's stopped behind the line right away by Michael Joshua. Great pressure right up the middle by him. Now Penn State, another penalty will move them back another five yards. We'll see what they do here. Penn State now in the shotgun, trips to the right now, third and 18. Ernsberger in the game, the backup quarterback, and he throws over his receiver and that will be deflected 24 to 7 now after settling for that field goal so here is jj applewoods now he's gonna throw on the run he thought about running he had the room but he will just throw it to daquani jordan doesn't want to take the hit right there it's a gain of 10. third and 11 now throw into the right side this is thomas james look at him using the stiff arm getting the extra yardage it's a first down Thomas James is quietly one of my favorite targets on the team because he is just a strong body. He's not fast, but he can just do things with the ball in his hands. Here is time now on the outside. Middle screen desi designed for him his third catch of the day. Third and one now. Applewoods throws to Benjamin Duke out of the backfield. He breaks a tackle and takes a big hit. 
It's a gain of five now. A minute 17 to go at this point. Need to put some points on the board here. We hurried up to the line now. We still have all three timeouts also. Applewood's rolling. Try to look for a man to throw it to. He throws it to the last second. It's Keyshawn Evans into the game. A gain of 25. Keyshawn Evans is the fifth string receiver on our depth chart. He gets in for a big time catch. You love to see the depth coming through for this Whitetails team. Here's Applewood scrambling. He gets hit hard at the one. It's going to be a fourth and goal. This is definitely the game here as the clock keeps running down. JoJo Boom on the handoff. He gets his first career touchdown. 24 to 14. We line up to go for the onside kick. It's recovered by Penn State. The Whitetails will lose in this one only by 10. I'm actually surprised here. We didn't get blown out. But the Penn State defense was the difference. They provided pressure all game. And I know we probably have bad habits with rolling out of the pocket, but a lot of times you cannot trust this offensive line. I mean, even like running the ball is the worst. The reason why I haven't been handing the ball off as much as I have wanted to is because when I do, I mean, the defenders are right there in the backfield, absolutely pancaking our offensive line. That's one spot we will have to recruit at. Tay Evans, though, did have that big reception. Hopefully, you know, that kind of sparks something with our deep balls. We don't go deep a whole lot, but I definitely want to start doing that. But look at our tackles for loss. We had a ton of them, and mostly stopping that triple option look was uh, the reason for that. Kai Johnson had 69 yards rushing. Hill went 19 for 21, only two incompletions, one of those being an interception. So now we go into the Pittsburgh matchup to face Roderick Grosner and the Pittsburgh. Uh, I can't even think of the mascot. That's so funny. But here's the thing about Pittsburgh. We decided that they would be one of our rivals in this series. So they are really a rival for us. And looking at, you know, their defense, it's not very good. Their offense, not very good. So we will see if we can actually contend in this one. The ACC is a conference that we do want to kind of eventually get into. We got kicked out of the Big Ten, but now we play Pittsburgh. This will be our first real test on the season. And here we go. The All Oranges against the All Blues. Our first rivalry game of the series in the first play. It will be a handoff to Benjamin Duke, picking up a gain of one. And that's exactly what I talk about. Handing the ball off, their defenders are right in the backfield. Second and nine now. Here is Applewoods throwing across the middle. That's Jeremy Hasty. And as you can see, J.J. Applewoods got the start. Evan Coleman did not get cleared to play today after that, suffering that concussion. Applewoods throws on the run, a wide open just in time. And he cannot just flip it to him. Time had a whole lot of space to run. Instead, Grosner comes out onto the field. Grosner is just a sophomore, and he is a dual-threat quarterback. We will see him for the next three years. He picks up a gain of 11 on his first scramble, and that is a first down. Second and 10 now at the 40. Grosner takes off again, and he picks up a gain of six. I think early in his career, he's going to have to rely on his legs, but as he gets older, he's going to have to throw the ball, especially if he wants to make it to the next level. Here's a quick throw. It's Simmons, and he picks up a gain of 12 and a first down. Third down stops are really what hurt us versus Penn State. We'll see if it can help today. And here's a throw by Grosner. He had a wide open man for a walk-in touchdown, and his man just drops it. Third and 11 now. They decide to hand off this time to Mitchell. Crawford Joe has a tackle, and somehow Mitchell stays on his feet and almost picks up the first down. He needed a 12. He only got 11. So now we come back onto the field now, down by three. Here's a quick throw. It's Daquani Jordan in a great middle screen right there. We had the option to throw the bubble or the middle screen. Jordan takes it for a gain of 11. First and 10 now, Benjamin Duke, and there is a positive yardage run right there. Gain of four, but the pressure was right in there right away. Our offensive line really, really does struggle a whole lot. Third and six, Applewoods throws to an open man. That was Tay Evans and Applewoods 
cannot find him, and we will have to punt again. Groves, they're back out onto the field now in the pistol formation. Hand off to Mitchell. Mitchell cuts back, finds an open space, and that is going to be a long run, and nobody is going to catch him in the open field. It's a touchdown. Wow. What vision on that play. He breaks it all the way, and Pittsburgh will take the 10-0 lead. Excellent ball carrier vision. And now Mitchell extends this lead. They are 1-1 one one coming into this game as the number 15 team in the country. And there is another turnover on the offense. We just have to clean this up. We have to be accurate with our passes. These guys are wide open. Two of seven start for J.J. Applewoods. That one was absolutely overthrown by a mile right to the defense. So here's Grosner again with the ball. Hand off to Mitchell and Will Copes with the tackle in the backfield. It's a loss of two yards. He comes all the way up from that safety position. He wasn't even in the box. So second and 12 now. Grosner in the pocket. Throws to an open man. It's Simmons again. And his tight end Simmons gets to about the five-yard line. It's a gain of 12 or a gain of 19, I should say. As now they get it to a first and goal. Running a man in motion, Groves and running the option, pitches out to uh, uh, his receiver look like, and that's a stop in the back backfield, Pat Bembry, who's had a couple of games with sacks now, and he gets a nice tackle for loss. Third and goal now, Mitchell, handoff. It's gonna be a tackle at the two, and it's Bembry again. He had the shoestring tackle to save the touchdown right there. Six for 110 for Mitchell, but we do get them to settle for three points. So here's Applewoods now. He keeps it on that one on the option. He picks up a gain of 10. Getting to the 36. Handoff. It's Benjamin Duke, and he picks up a gain of two yards. And that's enough for the first down. Applewoods now throwing across the middle to an open Tay Evans. I'm not even sure what happened right there. Tay Evans just not expecting the pass. I think he was looking to run another route there. Third and 10 now. Applewoods throws across the middle. That's going to be caught by Tay Evans. That time he's looking for the pass. It's a gain of 13. You got to gain some trust with your receivers going right back to him. Applewoods now. Middle screen called for Evans. And the pressure gets in there literally right away. No time to throw that ball. And now it's a third and 15. Applewoods now, play action fake again, throwing across the middle into traffic. He had a really tight window to fit that pass. Four of 13, not even 30 yards passing. Another game when the opposing defense is just shutting us down. Here is Grosner back out onto the field, and that is Shane Laird with a gain of 16, and now they are across the 50. Is now up by 13. Grovesner looking comfortable. Throwing to a really tight window. He fit that one in to Ryan Altman for a gain of 10 yards. At the 37, Grovesner running the option. But this time, Will Copes with another big hit in the backfield. How about Copes today? He is just making plays. Another handoff. This time, in the backfield, is Pat Bembry. How about Pat Bembry and the games he's having? Maybe he's going to start turning into a young star. He's even got the impact star coming into this game. Third and 16 now. Mitchell, handoff. He cuts up field but won't get free from Tommy Gunn, number 58. And it looks like they will punt from that uh, spot onto the field. So we're almost into the third quarter now as we have about three minutes to go before halftime. But our offense is just not getting going. Here's a quick throw. It's Thomas James. They send the all-out pressure right there. I think our running back out of the backfield was wide open. Third and four. Applewoods throws across the middle. Tay Evans can't hold on to it. We are just shooting ourselves in the foot today. Five of 15 for Applewoods. 34 yards passing. We can't complete anything. We can't move the chains. It's just all punts, and we're still only down by 13. Here is Grozer now across the 50 at about the 25. We send the pressure and get to him. It's a sack. And Jermaine Carraway, another game, another sack for him. 
And it looks like Tommy Gunn should have had the sack on that one. Bringing it back to the 31. Second and 16. Throwing wide open. Jeremiah Cornelius. Gain of 18. How does this keep happening here as now they're inside the 15 threatening to score in the red zone? It's a design quarterback power. Grosner breaks the tackle and stays on his feet for the touchdown. This is where he hurts you. And now it's a 20 to nothing lead. Pittsburgh taking full advantage today of this Whitetails offense in the first half. Here's a quick throw across the middle. And is that intercepted? Just in time had it in his hands. The ball bounces around, bounces backwards off of 54 and 39 dives and ends up with the interception. Like, I have not seen that type of interception in this game in a very long time. So here is Pittsburgh now back out on offense. And there is a nice play once again. And who else? Pat Bembry. Third and 10 now, Grosner throws left side at Spencer, but it looked like that play had illegal men downfield. Yes, they will call it. They call it pass interference in this game, but it's really an illegal man downfield. Bringing it back for a third and 20 now. Usually I believe that's a loss of down, but we'll see. Grosner throws to the left side. He's got Cornelius who breaks a tackle and stays on his feet and somehow falls forward. For 21 yards, you cannot make this up. Inside the red zone now, under 20 seconds to go. Grosner throws to the right side. He's got Young. That one will be a gain of nine yards. Now at the nine with nine seconds to go, throw into the end zone. Touchdown, Pittsburgh. Seven seconds to go in the half. And it is just straight dominance today from Pittsburgh. So our trip to the state of Pennsylvania, definitely going as the experts predicted. Here is Groves, they're rolling out though. That's a sack by Tristan Wynn. It's about a loss of three yards, but still third and 12. If there's a couple of bright spots, at least some of our guys are making plays in the backfield. Tristan Wynn, Jermaine Carraway, and also Pat Brent Bembry and Will Copes. But besides those four, we're not doing much of anything today. This episode has been kind of down on offense as well as Justin Time gets going with that catch. That's only his second catch of the game. We're in the third quarter. Got to get him involved a lot earlier. Because here's Benjamin Duke with the longest run of this episode so far. It's a gain of eight for him. Third and seven, running James in motion. Quick throw, deflected, looking for time in a tight window. And now it's fourth and seven. We don't get this. This is probably the game. It's probably the game anyway. Here's a deep throw. And that was supposed to be for Thomas James on the sideline, and it somehow ends up right over the middle of the field. The third turnover of the day, the third pick. And Wisconsin State just does not show up at all today. Down 27 nothing here to end the third quarter. Here's Mitchell with the handoff. He runs up the middle, breaks the tackle, somehow picks up a gain of 12. He's at 155 yards rushing today. Grosner throws across the middle. It's Foster who goes up and climbs the ladder. He will come down with it. It's a gain of 16 yards. Now a second and nine at about the 22. Handoff to Mitchell. He finds space and somehow avoids the tackler in the hole. It's a touchdown. Not a pretty run right there. Or not a pretty attempt to stop the run right there. 34 to, to nothing. I mean, this is just pathetic. Is Applewood still in the game here? He's under pressure. He goes down. I mean, there is nothing we can do about some of this stuff. They are just a better team. They are showing it today. I didn't think they were that high overall on defense either. Just that our team is just so bad. Here's a deep shot, though, and that is caught by Tay Evans in traffic. I mean, if there's one, I don't even know if that's luck right there, but Noah Binkowski comes into the game, and Tay Evans 
His second straight game with the 40 plus yard reception. It's a first down. I decide to keep Binkowski in the game now for a first and 10. He throws way overthrown, picked off. Osborne has it. That will do it. Pittsburgh ends up killing us. Five interceptions in this game. And it's not even close. 41 to nothing ends up being the final score. And we drop our third game of the season. We got a lot of things to do to get better. And you can just see where we measure up versus the ACC right there. It just wasn't pretty today. 8 of 24 for Applewoods. I mean, we couldn't even get over like 30 yards in the first half. I mean, it was that bad. We didn't even have many drops. I think the pressure just got to us so much that we couldn't even complete anything. But then on defense, like I said, it's the four. Bembry, Copes, Caraway, and Wynn who are doing their thing uh, so far. Hanchi had a good game last game, but it's just got to come together for the entire team in order for us to win. How about Mitchell? 16 for 177 today. I mean, he absolutely ran all over us. It wasn't even close. Jared Mays actually visited their school during that game. He was the number one receiver in the country, and he's still they're still fourth on his list. So a rival might not get stronger in that department after that win. So we'll see what happens the rest of the season. We end up playing, I believe, a couple more top 25 teams, including number five Washington, who was undefeated. Uh, but they will be coming up in a couple of games. We play Eastern Michigan next episode. And I'm thinking that we will start the basketball season with a little basketball scrimmage and then play Eastern Michigan as well. So this is actually a big game for us because if we sweep two MAC teams, that means that we are actually maybe a step above the MAC. Maybe we get an invite from another conference because we're looking to get an invite to a conference this year. That is the goal. So we will see if we get that. Hit subscribe, hit that like button, stay tuned. Let's get it. Let's go. I'm about my plaid, which I'm decked up on blue bills. And I won't stop until the cash pit look like fall leaves in a bag fill. Tell her out of my face if she coming with that bull. Quick to save my peace. I'm so after school special. She brainy but them jeans looking like